Welcome, everybody, to another amazing episode of Coast to Coast. I'm Tony Dean. I'm Eve Hart. Hey, Tony, good to see you over there yeah. on the East Coast. Yes, weather's <laughs> pretty good over here, I got to say. A little rainy, but, you know, it's warm for New Jersey. I'll take 60 degrees any day in, uh, right. in April. <laughs> there you go. Well, it's more like spring here on the West Coast. We're looking at like 85. Matter of fact, oh. over the weekend, it was like almost like 95. So wow. we got some warm weather is here, and I think it's here to stay. Summer is here, right? <laughs> in California. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much the two seasons we have, winter and summer. So if you're tuning in for the first time, ladies and gentlemen, well, we, you know, we kind of keep it, we try to keep it kind of light here. We pull out some stories that uh, maybe uh, we can have some laughs with and uh, <laughs> maybe enlighten you a little bit. I don't know if how much enlightening we do, but we probably more laugh more than anything else, which I think we all yep. agree we can all use as much of that <laughs> as we can. We try to try to stay away from the real heavy stuff. There's too much of that in the news. So we figure we'll go in a different direction and, uh, you know. Give, give you something to laugh about a little bit in this world. <laughs> yeah, lighten your life a bit and uh, take you away from your your everyday, you know, routine. We're going to take you out of it. I trust us here. We got some great stories today. Yes, and uh, you know, I figured it was about time we did like somewhat of a proper <laughs> introduction of who we are <laughs> and what we do instead of dive into our stories. But people people get you know the idea sooner or later anyway when they we hear just it. get so excited, Tony, that we just can't yeah. wait to get our stories going. Yeah. <laughs> and even though it's light and funny, sometimes it's not for the lighthearted as we we do kind of make fun of. <laughs> we we do take advantage of. Uh, situations. I mean, not all yeah, the time, yeah you know, it's not hard to take advantage of people that do stupid stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, or, or just caught or just caught in stupid situations, unfortunately. <laughs> yes. Good thing they can't see me on a daily basis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. All right. Well, I'm going to start with this story. Um, you know, it's been a long time since I've been in the dating world, and I know it's been quite a while for you, too. But uh, there's some dating behaviors that will give you red flags or green flags. Oh, really? Yeah. So this okay. is kind of interesting because I'm like, wait a minute. Uh, I didn't know there was a green flag here. I always knew that's a red flag, you know, so I so guess. Are we, so we're, are we assuming like red flag, you know, get as far away as you can. Green flag. This might be a keeper type of deal. Exactly. So um, the, I have a list of about 10 things. So I have a list of about 10 things. And that's quite interesting because there's some of these things are things that I never even thought about, you know, that whether they should be a green flag when these things happened back in my dating days, I was like, oh, I guess I did really good. But, <laughs> you know, I think sometimes when we're in the moment, we just overlook these things. So, yeah, well, you know, the whole love is blind thing, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. So um, <laughs> this is, comes from it's a BuzzFeed poll. So, uh, and they, they did some research on several dating behaviors. So, you know, this is legit stuff. It came from right. Buzzfeed. <laughs> <laughs> so the n number one is saying giving small gifts early on in a dating process. So I'm going to ask you, you think that's a green flag or a red flag, Tony? So, I mean, could it include like flowers or you mean like actual, like a necklace or something like that? Like it doesn't stay. So let's think it's like flowers or something, something small. It's a small gift very yeah. early in the dating process. All right. So maybe not on the first date, but yeah, early on, I would probably think flowers are okay, but that's probably the limit. You know, I'm not no real gifts yet, you know? Okay. So you're saying that's a green flag. Yeah, I think so. If it's like a second date, you know, first date, it's kind of like a little too, um, you know, um, too early stereotypical, like you know, it's meaningless, so, sort of superficial. Okay. Well, you agreed with 85% of people. They said it's cool. 15% said, uh, that's a red flag. Oh. I think, I think those people just have issues because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think if some guy showed up and brought me flowers, even if it was on the first date, as long as yeah. it's not roses, don't yeah. bring red roses on the first date, but, you know, <laughs> like, like daisies or something, you know, or sunflowers yeah. or something like that. That's just a nice gesture. Okay. But red roses. No, that's a huge red flag run. I, I think there might be a small book in it for you right here. I think we're kind of formulating, you know, Eve's, <laughs> Eve's flowers, you know, situational type of book. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a, a short read, like a bathroom read. You know? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> all right. Texting is the second one. Texting all day. Yeah. So this is early on in your relationship. It doesn't say, you know, if it's like within a month or two, but it says early on. So in my opinion, is saying that it's not like the first or second date, you know, maybe a month into it or so. Okay. And you're texting all day long. 
you think that's a red flag or a green flag? So I'll have to, I'll have to quantify this again or qualify this again. So <laughs> I remember, you know, back in my dating days, I, I kind of like went by, you know, I, it was sort of, I was sort of reactionary to if I was getting them all day, I was doing it all day. If I wasn't, I kind of got the feeling, well, maybe, they, you know, maybe they're not into that It'll, or I'm bothering mm. them type of thing. But okay. I'm thinking if it's mutual and they're going back and forth, that's green flag. I'm going green flag. All right. Well, 47 people, 47% of people said it's a green flag. 53% okay. said it's a red flag. Okay. So I'm assuming that's, it's one-sided kind of then I'm thinking like they're, I mean, they're yeah, thinking it's, it's like one-sided. Pretty close statistics there. Yeah. So I'm Tough thinking call. the 53% are men and the 47% are women. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That's just my opinion. Yeah. But what do I know? All right. Asking you to hang out more than twice a week. Oh. Red, fl- red flag or green flag? Uh, I'm going, gr- I'm going to go green flag. I'm going to go, I'm going to go aggressive on this one. You were right. 82% of them said it's a green flag. 18 percent right. said as a red flag. There you go. That's okay. men thinking that us girls are just wanting a little too much too soon. All right. All right. <laughs> Commit, <laughs> commitment issues there. Maybe the 80% is the women on that one. <laughs> yeah, baby. Ooh, this is a good one. How about if they start calling you mine early oh, on in the relationship? Really? Like to other people, I guess. Or even to well, your face. Like, hey, you're, you're mine. Oh. Wow. Okay. So red flag, <laughs> green flag. <laughs> um, let's say. Go with your gut. Red flag. Bingo. 64% <laughs> said it's a red flag. 36% said green flag. What was the per- uh, what was the percentage on red flag and um, said red flag? 64%. Wow. All right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, don't be calling your baby mine within the first <laughs> month or two. <laughs> That's a way to send them back in real quick. My girlfriend, you're what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So how about introducing you t- uh, to their friends and family within the six months of dating? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, if it was, if friends was one question and family was another question, it would be a little bit easier. No, this um, is friends and family. I'm going to go. in one. Oh, tough call. Uh, I'm going to have to go red flag. You are wrong. 90% <laughs> said it's a green flag. Wow. Six right. months in, they feel like it's safe enough for you to start meeting. Oh, was it you six know? months? I think I missed that part. Oh, it okay. It was six months. <laughs> yeah, yeah, six months I would go green flag. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Make, that makes sense. If you, if you can't introduce somebody to your family in six months, Right. And you're just, you're a booty call or something's going on there. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Friend with benefits and that's it. <laughs> FWBs, baby. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. How about uh, consistently seeing a therapist? <laughs> oh, <laughs> consistently. I'm going red flag. 70% said it's a green flag. <laughs> Are you well adjusting? I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm like kind of blown away on this one. Like if I was seeing a therapist, I probably wouldn't be telling this person that I'm dating early on. Oh, hey, I see a therapist. I'd wait probably or about at six least months. maybe tell them why. <laughs> <laughs> probably wait six months. <laughs> I don't want them judging me or then if you tell them why they'll be like, yeah, yeah right. She, that, that's just yeah. a lie. How come you constantly can't go out with me, but you don't tell me why? <laughs> You can't. <laughs> I'm busy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So 70%, 70, uh, 30% said it's a red flag. Okay. How about uh, talking about making long term plans together Ooh. early on? Early, early on. on. Okay. Red flag. It's got to be, it, that's got to be a slam dunk. Yes. 64% right. said it's a red flag. Wow, other, that, that percentage is a little lower though than I thought. Yeah, same yeah. here. Th- 36% said it's a green flag. Okay. I guess those are the people that are really quickly just wanting to commit. They're <laughs> done with the dating scene. They're sick of it. They're like, all right, let's just tie the knot. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter if we get along or not. Yeah. <laughs> all right. How about wanting to share locations on social media? So in other words, like you can always keep track of where the other person is by, you know, giving them your location. Early on? Early on. Oh, red flag. Yes. 82% said that's a red flag. Absolutely. (laughs) 
<laughs> I'd be like, peace. You don't yeah, need to know I'm what thinking I'm doing. Like stalker. <laughs> this, this, dude, yes. this, this dude's going to beat me at some point. <laughs> Control. I'm like, yeah. yeah, you're trying to be very controlling very no early way. on. Sure. I guess 18 percent said that it's OK and is a green flag. Wow. The daddy uh, issues. I think well, they need to go see the therapist. Daddy issues. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How about making a point to plan all your dates? Mm. Yeah. So you're trying to like, oh, yeah. All right, Tony, let's go do this on Saturday. And then on Tuesday, let's go dis. And then, oh, yeah, next Sunday, we're going to do this. Oh, early on. Early on, we're talking, right? Yes. It's a tough call. I'm going to go red flag. You're right. 60% <laughs> said it's a red flag. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I mean, come on, you don't yeah. need to make that many plans early on. Yeah, exactly. No, Take maybe one date, one date at a time, you know. Yeah, maybe like, hey, it's Wednesday and you're like, hey, baby, you want to go out to the movies with me on Friday? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Cool. You know, right. That type of thing. But yeah, not not in advance. No, Yeah, I need to make sure that, you know, in the movies that you don't talk to the entire movie and then you kill it for <laughs> me because I might yeah. not want to go out with you again. <laughs> Uh, I fall asleep. <laughs> I swear, <laughs> if the movie does not interest me, I am out. <laughs> I'm so bad. <laughs> I just How'd you like that movie? It was great. <laughs> <laughs> if it doesn't have animals in it, I'm not going to stay awake for it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. How about calling you multiple times a day? Calling. That would be a red flag. That would be annoying, too. And yes. Red flag. I'm going. I agree. Seventy nine percent said it's a red flag. Only twenty one percent said it's a green flag. Yeah. Okay. All right. So here is. Oh no, I have one more after this. Not being great at texting, but being great in person. <laughs> okay. So you're a horrible texter. So you meet someone online <laughs> and you're typing back and forth, texting, but you're horrible at it. But then they go ahead and say, all right, I'll give you a chance. And then you meet and they're great in person. So green flag, red flag. You know, have- it's it's kind of like one of those things you're you're pl- pres- you're pleasantly surprised. But at the same time, it's like I can never communicate with this person unless we're talking. So I'm going to go red flag because it's annoying. It'd be like it'd be difficult because you can't always talk. Okay. And 76% said it's a green flag. Oh, all right. (laughs) Because they're pleasantly surprised. Yeah. Yeah. 24% said it's a red flag. Maybe, you know, I I don't know these days. I think people are just so quick to communicate via texting. And some people just don't like to text because things are, can be misconstrued. Big time. Big time. I'm guilty of it. I'm guilty of it for sure. I think we all are very guilty of that. So, I mean, you take you take something one way and then it wasn't intended to be that way. So make sure you always send that laughing emoji yeah, exactly. <laughs> just to be safe. That reminds, that reminds me one time my, my mother sent my daughter a text and don't know how, you know, like they have the tendency like I do to talk into their phone, They re, you know, and then it goes out, you know, mm-hmm. and for some reason, my mother texted my daughter accidentally we have to go to the F and something tonight. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't check what she said and she sent it. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> it, was great. That's, it was great. That's when you go real quick. That was a typo. That was a typo. <laughs> Please say it was a typo. <laughs> You're that's, sending that to your granddaughter. <laughs> that will be remembered forever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We still laugh about it. Oh, I bet. And here we are laughing about it today. Yeah, exactly. All right. Sharing it with America, Tony. Good job. (laughs) Hi, mom. (laughs) All right. The last one, not texting good morning right when you wake up. When In the beginning. Yes. Again, in the beginning. Okay. Yes. Not texting. I'm going red flag. 71% said that's a green flag. Oh, 20, 29% said it's a red flag. (laughs) All right. Wow. So basically red means good. Red is toxic. So (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I mean, I think we could have figured that out just fine that red, it means toxic, but (laughs) so there you go. So all you out there that are in the dating world, there are some tips to help you make your dating experience better. Wow. I, I, you just made me realize how (laughs) how difficult dating is. (laughs) It really is. <laughs> right. It yeah. sounds very difficult in these worlds. I mean, yeah. back in the day, man, 
when my husband and I were dating, we didn't have cell phones. We had to. Pick yeah, it was up so simple. Yeah, you couldn't yeah, text to, and all that. Yeah, there was no yeah. emails. There was no. Yeah. No, it was you had to pick up the phone and talk on the the phone that the rotary phone that's attached to the kitchen wall. <laughs> if you're lucky, you have a cordless in your bedroom where you can sneak off and talk, <laughs> or you see each other. You know, yeah. it's it's one or the other. Yeah. Now now exactly. it's just everything's text and I don't know. I feel like it's an impersonal world to some degree. Right. <laughs> so, all right. All right. So let me ask you this question. When, you know, when we all go to weddings, right. You, you kind of mm-hmm. like you get into it, you might have a sip of bubbly or a beer or whatever your, you know, your fancy is to kind of get you loosened up and into it. So you're mm-hmm. you know, just sitting there like dead wood in a chair. Or, you know, <laughs> if your husband doesn't dance, you might want to have him get a couple of beers. And before you know it, everybody's kind of bopping all over the floor. Right. So yes, it kind of happens generally that, that people are into that. Oh, apparently in Florida, this woman, a 42 year old, I'll leave the names out because they're really not important. It's not going to be anybody famous. <laughs> you don't want to call them out. <laughs> <laughs> Idiot. This 40 year old, 42 year old bride in Florida in conjunction with her 31 year old wedding caterer. Okay. It's important um, to have a wedding caterer. Yeah. So they had, a, they had 50 guests at their wedding. I guess I'll mention that it's kind of, you know, kind of a little bit important. It's somewhat low key. Okay. All right. All right. So let me read here. (laughs) So I get this right for the police report. So this woman and her caterer have now been charged with delivering marijuana, tampering with guest food and a misdemeanor culpable negligence. So both of these women Uh, and they turned themselves into police, you know, and got released. Um, (laughs) Both of these women, uh, they infused Chocolate covered strawberries, pudding, shots, desserts, and lasagna with mar- with marijuana. They laced it with weed. <laughs> <laughs> they want to have a good party. Yeah. <laughs> I guess this woman being forty years old figured nobody was, everybody's just gonna sit down all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So she laced most of the food at her wedding with weed. Yes, so, and got her caterer to buy into it. And she cooked it into the food. Yeah. <laughs> so everything that they ate was laced with weed. Yes, pre- pretty much. It sounds like it. Yep, absolutely. So oh, they said it's. They probably all had green fever. <laughs> <laughs> Do you even know what that is? That's like when you overdo it, like, because you can't overdose on weed per se, but you can get sick off of it and it'll give you green fever. You'll yeah, so- be really sick. Yeah. So hold on. Let me get to that. Then you can comment on it. Cause okay. um, <laughs> I'll, well, let me throw out my um, full disclaimer here. I've never smoked weed. I mean, it's, it's not a big deal. It's legal now in New Jersey. So I can say if I did or not, but I just never have. It's just okay. full, full disclosure. So, you know, I just go by, I know what's what it's supposed to do. All right. So tests were completed on silverware bowls, several glasses, a plate, and even the lasagna. And they all come back negative or positive. Um, <laughs> The test came back that all guests who had tested showed signs of cannabis. <laughs> and none of them had any idea that their food was laced. And here's the weird part that the the, uh, bra- uh, the groom was asked by the police if the um, guests knew that the food was laced. And he said, absolutely not. But my question is, did he know? I'm guessing he know. I'm going to guess he know. Maybe she was just pulling a surprise on her, her hubby. <laughs> on him too. <laughs> maybe, maybe he's just uptight yeah. and she needs to loosen him up. <laughs> okay, so to get back to what I was going to say before, the guest did not report feeling, here's the weird part, and you have to help me with this. The, the guest did not report feeling particularly mellow, which is common side effect of this substance, obviously. That's the, that's the point of it is to kind of chill you out for the most part, I'm thinking. Right. But so here's this is how the people felt. Now, you tell me this sounds like weed to you. To me, to me, it sounds like mushrooms and, any, and any, anything and everything else. <laughs> Shrooms. <laughs> yeah. One woman told police, I felt numb, helpless, and my mind was playing strange things in her head. <laughs> <laughs> I believed my son-in-law had died and my family hadn't told me. Yeah. <laughs> It's because they had high amounts of it in, in their system. Right. When you overdo it, you start, you know, you can hallucinate and things such as that. 
and that associated with green fever. So I think it probably snuck up on them to where they had, they didn't really have time to realize what was happening. So the same person, police reported that this gas was loud and had to be given something to calm down at the hospital. <laughs> 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 well, there. So, oh my goodness, there is two strains of weed, and I know they have one that's a stativa, and that one will simmer you and just kind of mellow your mood. But then there's the other type of weed that's going to be more like an upper and make you more alert, make you more fun. So my guess is that they were that they would lace them with the, the fun other one, type. but they overdid. But they over they overdid it. They over they overdid them. it. Yes, yeah. they they just because you can't put it in everything because you don't know how much of what someone's going to eat. Right. Right. So you think, <laughs> okay, they're going to have a slice. Okay. It has, I don't know. I don't know what the measurements of weed is, but a yeah. small amount in there or well, whatever. Plus you're, and you're talking about a, a buffet. So people are going crazy. Yeah. They're going like back for maniacs. seconds and thirds. <laughs> <laughs> so every time they went back, Boom, they had some more weed in their system. They and, must have- and, not, and not only that, but it's probably giving them the munchies. I'm, I'm more hungry <laughs> yes. instead of full. <laughs> yes, exactly. I'm like, so there was no children at this wedding, I take it. it there was 50 people, I'm guessing. And it's a, the, you know, they were in their 40s. I'm guessing not. Had you know, to be no children. Little. If they were lacing stuff, there had to be no kids. Uh, uh, I'm guessing. Yeah, I'm guessing that too. <laughs> Another Happy. person, I felt tingly. My heart started to race and I was having <laughs> crazy thoughts. <laughs> this reminds me of a story. So my older daughter and her husband, when they first got married, um, somebody gave him a bag of weed yeah. and neither of them had ever used weed before. All right. So they're like, all right, we're going to bake it into some brownies. And so as they're making the brownies, they're like, how much weed do we put in? So I sprinkle a little bit. I don't know. I don't think that's enough. So I sprinkle a little more. And they're like, yeah, just put the whole bag in. Oh, no. <laughs> they could have to it. come to the rescue or they did it. They actually put the whole bag in. <laughs> they put the whole bag in. I didn't know about this for like, I don't know, months <laughs> later. She didn't tell me about this. But I wish I was there to witness this stuff because shit went down. Excuse my mouth. But <laughs> so they cooked it. And they each took a little sliver of the brown and they ate it. Nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. Well, I think maybe we should eat some more. So they took another sliver. Well, it's been like an hour and a half. Still nothing's happening. Let's eat some more. <laughs> they ate like half the pan of brownies between the two of them. <laughs> and then suddenly it hit <laughs> my oh. daughter. My daughter says, I swear. She's like, I was laying on the ground and I could see myself laying on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> the stories that she tells me because they basically like overdose. So, so my son-in-law's dad is a, a heavy pot smoker. And so okay. he told his dad and he's like, bro, I didn't think you can uh, overdo it with weed, but you clearly clearly OD'd on some weed because the stories <laughs> wow. they were saying, the things that were they were feeling, like you just mentioned that this person was saying how they felt, it's how they were feeling because right. they had too much weed in their system. These people got OD'd by the bride, <laughs> and the wedding coordinator. <laughs> ah, that's hilarious. See, other, other people were vomiting. <laughs> yep. Green fever. Um, let's see here. What was, there was, a, there was another good one here. Um, <laughs> Somebody felt like their heart was going to stop and they had to text themselves. So if, the, <laughs> if they died in their car, somebody would know what happened to them. <laughs> this lady. Oh, my gosh. They didn't think this through very well. They should have maybe just laced the cake or something. Yeah, exactly. Not all the food. They're they're idiots. <laughs> right. Oh or say, God. you know, have something on the side as an alternate than dessert to say there's, you know, these are funny brownies or something. <laughs> Yes. Uh, yes. Oh my goodness. Uh, that, that is hilarious. And I hate to say it that half these people aren't going to even remember the damn wedding. <laughs> <laughs> I was where last night. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I was there. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. And they, so they, so the bride and the, uh, um, coordinator, they turn themselves into the cops. Yeah, so apparently, I guess there were enough people that got sick that somebody must have said something. 
And, you know, when it became apparent <laughs> that these women were in trouble, they just turned themselves in. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't they didn't book them or anything. No, they did. Oh, they did. Uh, let's see. Um, Cause it's illegal yeah. in Florida. I, uh, apparently, or to maybe to give, give it to people unknown. I don't know. I don't know what the particulars are. It's true. They are uh, technically drugging somebody, <laughs> but <laughs> I, I don't think it's legal in Florida, but I mean, I don't know for sure, but come on, governor, you need to legalize weed. <laughs> yeah, it's oh, now legal goodness. here for uh, adults 21 and over. So you can just go there buy you. it now for recreational use. There you go. It, the, you guys have joined the California. That's it. Yeah. So look at all this weed. Well, since we're talking about drugs anyways, then I'm going to go ahead and continue <laughs> on to this next story. This is a great okay. way to segue. Uh, okay. I don't know if we're ready for more laughs, but we got more laughs coming. Good. That's good. It's always a good thing. Uh, so a jockey in New Zealand just got banned from racing for three years after she and... And her racehorse both tested positive for meth. No way. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So she's, uh, well, we all know that performance enhancing is illegal in sports, yep. right? Right. So it's illegal in horse sports racing too as well and giving a horse some meth would be performance enhancing yes okay <laughs> but who in the right wine would ever think that they would give their horse meth i'm like how do you okay first of all before i get into the story how do you get your your horse to even snort meth what do you or what do you put in it yeah how do you get it i mean i'm not a druggie so i don't know if you snort yeah. it or maybe maybe you use a syringe and maybe you can you I don't know. Can you lay something with it? Uh, (laughs) I don't know. Yeah. They're oats. (laughs) Okay. Maybe I didn't think about that, but I'm trying to figure out how in the hell you give a horse meth, but apparently she has it down. So she's 50 years old and uh, the horse and her, uh, she helped train him. Uh, The horse's name is beef. Be flexi. (laughs) The horse is real flexible now. (laughs) Well, they won a race back in January, but after the race, they both tested po- positive for the drug. Oh. So the trainer, yeah, because they, they probably won by 20 lanes. <laughs> probably. <laughs> so the jockey uh, had to give uh, hair and um, urine samples. Oh no! And it all tested positive. So the article actually says that they're not sure how the horse got meth in its system. She first claims that she only did it once back in November because well, it was her birthday. So she wanted to try meth. That sounds legit, right? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> but then uh, her test results showed that uh, she'd been doing a lot more meth than just one time. So then she eventually admitted that uh, she did it two days before the race. Okay. Mm. Fair enough. All right. It stays in your system, I guess. Well, the New Zealand's racing board just banned her for three years. Uh, she cannot be reinstated. Oh, she could be reinstated if she tests negative for 18 months, though. So she oh. has to continually test that she's negative for meth in order to uh, continue in this. But, uh, okay. well, apparently the horse also got banned because he tested positive for a drug. Seems a bit unfair because the horse really didn't have a choice yeah. in this. <laughs> <laughs> him a slap on the wrist like he knows what's going on. <laughs> But apparently this is not the first time that a horse has been messed up. I sound like I said messed up, but it's messed. <laughs> or Same <effed>. thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> apparently uh, one by the name is one of the name of I'm not ticklish <laughs> tested positive for meth back in 2014. Okay. And apparently two other horses have also tested positive for meth this past year. <laughs> Now, I am a bit concerned about this article, as funny as it is, because meth is some very serious stuff. Yeah, like, you're definitely messing a horse up for sure. Exactly. I'm like, I can't imagine what, yeah. how that horse was feeling and, you know, the, the aftermath of the horse coming down from it because it is addictive. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. how, do you, how do you put a horse in rehab? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, honestly, you might have to put it down. Exactly. Yeah. And that's just, 
it course. really upsets me. I, I yeah. feel like it's a bit definitely cruel. Yeah. As funny as the story is, it just, you know, it also is very wrong. Yeah, so that idiot person that did that. Yeah. Do not jockey. be giving any of your animals meth at any yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to use it, yeah. go right ahead. Exactly. But keep your poor little animals out yeah. of it. <laughs> now, the only connection I can figure that why they would have given it to him, um, I knew somebody a long time ago that at least tried it once. Uh, I don't think they were actually got hooked on it for some reason, but they tried it once and they said they were up for three days straight. I can't imagine. They're awake, they're awake for three days mm-hmm. straight. So I'm thinking that, the, you know, must have an adrenaline effect to it. You know, once again, yes. another drug I have not tried. So <laughs> same here. <laughs> I don't know much about meth. I just know it's some really gnarly <laughs> stuff. Yeah. And um, yeah, I just I, I couldn't believe it when I saw the story. I'm like, what? <laughs> OK, yeah. I get that the jockey tested positive, but the horse. Yeah, so. Right. They didn't say I, maybe they took urine from the horse and tested urine from the horse. That's what I'm guessing to find out that the horse was actually messed up. So was the jockey stupid enough to be like, oh, we got into my stuff somehow. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> they admitted that they gave that the they horse. Gave it to them. All right. Okay. Meth, so. At least they were honest about it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. This was such another good episode of Coast to Coast Tony. Absolutely. We- it's always good to have fun and laughs. And this this one was no different. It was great. <laughs> yes. And we we can be contacted too, right? We have yes, an email. It's we do. What- it's coast to coast show one. Sorry that it's so long, but <laughs> everything else was taken. Coast <laughs> to coast show one. The number at, one. At number one at gmail.com. Right on. So hit Questions, us up. Questions, comments, yeah. you know, uh, ideas, stories, anything you want to hear. And uh, we'll also, we're all also, and uh, I don't want to make any promises, but we're going to try to work on some guests. And I have uh, something out to at least one person. Hopefully they'll, they'll get back to me. So right on. How exciting. Try to, maybe some like nostalgic, you know, where are they kind of, you know, from back in our day, TV, yeah. you know, TV, movie type people, see what, see what they're up to. And maybe they can, Give us some insight on what they were about back in the day or something. You know? mm-hmm. So we're always just having fun and just again, just very lighthearted. Let's just laugh and have a good time together. And exactly, there's, seem- there's enough. There's enough heavy stuff going on in the media. We we know we'll be the alternative. Exactly. So it was fun again. Until the next episode, Tony. Yes. Have a great Have a great week. I'm Tony Dean. I'm Eve Hart. And this was Coast to Coast. Thanks, everybody. Bye. You me, makes fun, makes fun, makes fun.